Kingston, Jamaica from a Strawberry Hill. What a pretty sight. The final showdown between the West Indies and India begins now. 13 draws in 41 test matches here at Sabina Park. It suggests that this is a result-oriented pitch. Well, captains winning the toss so far in this series have chosen to bat and thereafter dictated terms as been the pattern of the series. Do I have a surprise for you today? I don't know if it's going to be any different. Let's go to the toss with Tony Kozia and Laxman Shiva Ramakrishna. So for the final time in the series, the coin is about to go up. We have with us the match referee Jeff Crow and the two captains, Brian Lara from West Indies and Ralph Ravid. Brian, if you're ready. Tails. Tails, India. It's tails, and it's India. Rahul, what are you going to do? Uh, we're going to have a bad uh, shift. What do you think of the pitch? There's been a lot of talk about the pitch. What do you think of it? There's always a lot of talk about the pitch, isn't there? Uh, well, I mean, to be honest, it looks a bit slow. It might be a, a bit slow initially. Uh, might stop and, and, and come in uh, a little bit initially in the first morning. But as the game goes on, uh, I think, you know, we think it might turn a little bit. So hopefully we'll bat first, get a good score, and then uh, we get a chance to bowl forth uh, with us two spinners. Yeah, um, I hope so. And uh, I think the pitch looks a bit different compared to normal Sabina Park pitches. But, you know, um, hopefully we can get a result. You say it looks different. Uh, in what way? Well, it looks underprepared. Um, I think that it's, it's lacking um, firmness and it seems a bit soft under the surface. And hopefully that will play in our advantage and maybe in the first couple of sessions of this match. But definitely not the traditional Sabina Park hard pitch with a bit of grass on it. News from the toss. India have won the toss again and decided to bat first. So there's how India will bat. Both teams are the same as they were in the last test match in St. Kitts. Strong Indian batting. Matchman, uh, all the batsmen at the top have got hundreds. Mohammed Kaif got his first hundred as well in this series. Harbhajan Singh coming back into the side with five wickets in the last test match. And then the West End is also the same. Darren Ganga with a hundred and a sixty not out in the St. Kitts test match. Middle order strong. Marlon Samuels has made a difference coming in, uh, certainly to the batting, coming in as low as number seven. And there are the faster bowlers, Taylor, Collins and Cullimore, to be supported by Bravo. Some early wickets. And he just changed his, uh, his approach. It will be Pedro Collins who will start off from the Blue Mountain end. And he'll bowl to Wazim Jaffa inside edge for the first run of the test match and a very gentle pace from Collins to begin with. It's certainly going to be very important for Virendra to save up to get off to a good start. As indicated earlier, there is a little bit of moisture. The ball might not come on to the bat. Man behind square for Virendra Sebag. Look to bowl a few short deliveries. Caught. Brilliant catch. Brilliant catch. Sewai goes in the first over. That's magnificent. Ramnares Shawan under the bat. Played very firmly. Reflex catch. After having lost the toss, it's a good start for the West Indies. Very good reflex catch. It's not very easy at forward shot leg to stay down when the batsman is looking to work through the onside. Pedro Collins is delighted, and so are the West Indies. We're in the save out, dismissed for no score. India, one for one. A long time of trial. And there is scores in the series. Out early on to Fidel Edwards in the first test, and since then, he's given India a solid and sometimes more than solid start. Oh, he's hit him. He's hit Sawan at short leg. He's down. You could hear the quiet cry of anguish. It was well struck by Jaffa, and it got him flush. That's going to be a nasty blow. This is going to be certainly very, very nasty. Coming from the meat of the bat. Just got the feeling he's hit on the knee. Just right on the knee. Sometimes you get away when you hit on the fleshy part, but here it's going to be a major problem. He didn't have too much time to react. In fact, was taking evasive action. He's in distress. 
will West Indies uh, be without him as far as batting is concerned? Because if it's a kneecap, and if it is fractured, that's going to take a long time to recover. I just wonder why he didn't have on the, the protection. So West Indies have uh, a wicket, but they also have a player injured. Sawan having gone off. Now it will be Latchman in the strike to Jerome Taylor, who had an outstanding first over. And he started this one pretty well. It's quick at 140Ks. Just 88 miles. It swung around and look at the bounce. Ole! Beautifully bowled. Off stump, not back. And a defense which seemed to be breachless has been breached. He seemed to have everything covered. Beautiful bowling here by Taylor. Both openers gone now. Again, just going straight on. The seam was in a position where the ball would have normally gone towards slip, but to the surprise of Basim Jaffa and to the delight of Taylor, it just went straight on, knocking back the off stump. So another setback for India. Basim Jaffa is gone for one. India, three for two. got it he's dropped it oh that would have been the ideal start for Colimo Lara has put it down and he was right in the channel again and he's picked up an edge in almost every spell first spell he's bowled Corey Colimo and that was standard that was a regulation slip catch and that's heartbreaking for a bowler Ran Lara just having a look at the missed opportunity being replayed on the big television screen. We'll get a couple here. One of the few attacking shots we've seen this morning. The last time I looked, that sign said the George Headley Sand. I had no idea that it had been renamed. Nice shot just to push from Raul Dravid. First boundary. And it's been a long time coming. Just over pitched, and as we've seen a number of times in this series, the exquisite timing of Raul Dravid. Just a push. That's gone through. Shortish boundary down third man here at Sabina Park. And uh, Lara won't get to it, so. A boundary. So boundary is in successive overs now. Fielder giving chase, in fact, was uh, Morton. So things getting just a little bit easier now for India. They've moved on to 25 for two. Yeah. That's firmly struck, and nobody will stop that. We saw so much of that from VVS Laxman in St. Kitts. Doesn't seem to really hit the ball very hard, just times it. And it was past mid on before he could make any ground really to his left. Beautiful timing. Good shot of it there, full face to the bat. 
Yeah, just going back to Sowen, I, I just don't know whether he tweaked his knee a little bit, twisted his knee as well. Just the way he fell. He fell awkwardly. He moved onto his left side. I hope it's just a bruise, a bone bruise or something like that for him. Let's have and he put his left hand down on the ground to try to support his weight. And I just... And he's gone. He's got him. Laxman going for the drive. It flew to Gully. And the catch was taken by Renaco Morton. Going for a big drive here. Outside, it's actually closed the bat a little bit on that. I don't know why that happened. The gully takes the catch. And that's another great start there for the West Indies. The dangerous Laxman goes for 18. And India, 34 for 3. And that'll get him off the mark. Just a single. It's the end of the over. It's 35 for 3. Not the greatest way of getting off the mark. Pretty hard to drive those balls, I must admit. But if, if you see it short, it was on the front foot and couldn't quite open up. Got a good piece of bat on it. And that will be four. Nice juicy full toss to start with. want to get a batsman back in form just stone his back like that full toss and nice help high elbow and smack that was well struck good piece of fielding from a bad bounce shouldn't around Chandra Paul managing to knock that down You can see that it's reasonably vigorous at the moment. Will he rely on C? That's the other thing that might happen just a little bit as well. He might just take it down leg side. Bowlers do have to take some time to adjust. You can see him there just looking back at the crease. He's already had a warning for running on the wicket as well. In the first opportunity for Rahul Dravid to work through the gap. We'll get runs. And it'll be four of them. Getting high on his toes and also the high back lift, hitting it into the ground. Magnificent shot by Yubrad Singh. Well, a 50 up for uh, India here with this stroke. Going square, Dravid has two boundaries and Yuvraj has caught him. If you're going to bowl short at Yuvraj, it's got to be straight and it does have to be quicker. A real effort ball. Again, looks like might be just the occasion Yuvraj Singh is waiting for. We'll get another boundary. Two in a row. Just in that area, he loves to be. Left hand is usually very strong from the legs and uh, of a length that he likes to get into and look for. And someone like Taylor, who really represents your main strike power and force, just with pace, needs to be watched carefully. That was quick, that was on target, and that is a wicket. What a bowler. Jerome Taylor has been called into the attack by the skipper Lara. Looking to pick up a wicket, he's picked up a wicket and also damaged Yuvraj Singh. I think this was on the full, I think he was just beaten with pace. Yuvraj at the moment trying to hover away, a hobble. But he's been dismissed. Let's just see if it bounces for a start. 
Good seam position. Very full. Yes, it does. And Yuvraj really going nowhere with the bat. Let's have a look at it with the tram lines in. It's very straight, very full. That is dead. Absolutely dead. Started to look to play it to the leg side, then the wrists opened up. Yuvraj being almost assisted from the ground. His innings is over. Looks easier against Colimore. <laughs> After that over from Taylor. Anything will be easier. Picks up two more. More McCaff. Well, it was just the direct, the, the direct pace. Here is that last delivery. Mohamed Cave takes the bottom hand off the bat, but it takes the top hand, so that's going to be out and really a pace back. That's, I'm sorry, that's a shocker. That is a shocker. No wonder the, the reaction of the bowler. So disappointing when you have to work hard. Nothing against Ganga himself. He's probably taken some great catches, but he had time to move back there. That's just a bad decision. Very direct. Had to play at it once he was jumping. And gets a hand to it comfortably. But one step, half step back. Very disappointing for a man putting in a lot of effort. Bradshaw mid on does well to get to the ball. Well, make what you will of that. That just shows the, the disappointment mingled with anger. Nice shot, beautifully played. In trouble, but as soon as the half volley comes along, Cave can put it away. He's got 100 in the series. He's got 40 out and not out in Antigua. And because he's not batted a great deal, Mohamed Kaif is averaging over 100 in the series, striking the ball well. Should be averaging less than that. Beautifully played. That's a top-class shot from a top-class batsman. That was fractionally all pitched. And a straight drive brings the Indian flags out. It's a long half volley. And he's in a positive enough frame of mind that if he gets one of these, which has been very rare, still able to put it away, popped into that area off the glove. One went straight to Ganga, to be honest, at Orthodox Gully, which he did not hold on to. One or two of trust dropped in that general area where he's now. That's well pulled. That's a courageous shot by Keith, and he's put it away well. Had difficulty with a short ball early on. Should have been caught at gully off it. That's a good response. Well, it really is. Jerome Taylor was hoping for one that would fly off the glove with the batsman in a defensive position. No, he chooses the other option. No one at deep square leg. No one knows what sort of scores will happen. So, just be interesting to see how the pitch pans out. In the air and out. Jerome Taylor. Caught by Lara. Always on the cards for Mohamed Keith. Tremendous bowling here. By Jerome Taylor. India, 78 for 5. Well, it's the steepness of the bounce here. This guy has got the full package, really. He has so much potential, Jerome Taylor. Pace. He's got good control, and he gets movement each way through the air, as he showed this morning. Kaif needed to drop his hands, he didn't, and he's on his way back to 13, 78 for 5. Yeah, 
run straight away. There'll be a couple here. That's the way he's got to play, I think. He's looking for three, and he'll get three. quite interesting to see how a batsman with Tony's method gets on this pitch he looked to attack the bowlers will this make a difference will this play on the mind of the bowler he's been quite outstanding Listen, after a long time seeing a good exhibition of fast bowling In the air. Oh, and it's over the top of Ganga again. Oh, Morton, I'm sorry. Correction there, two more. What a spell this is from the youngster. He's bowling so well, even the wall is shaken up a bit. Feet off the ground, fending, and just eluding the man to knock him out in the fielder. What a delivery right in the throat right into the body line forcing the batsman to play at it just out of the reach a little bit of luck going in this way well that's the shot of the match enough's enough said the skipper bowl short to me i'm going to give you some 142k is the last delivery shook up rahul dravid with a bouncer earlier this is the temperament that we're talking about. The ability of Dravid, the world knows, but look at the temperament. Just watches the ball till the very end. He knows he's in a good position to hit it, and hitting it in front of the square is always going to be a very good shot indeed. And again, another boundary. And Dravid says, enough's enough. That ends the over. 13 runs from it. 91 for five. And they need to look at getting a decent score, at least in the first innings, because most people reckon it's not going to be easy to bat on day four, day five. They've got to occupy the crease, bat at least day and a half, and get at least 250, 300. It's Colimo, the man, who's bowled good lines, hasn't picked up a wicket. Again, Dhoni trying to be aggressive, going hard at that. Not the easiest of catch in the slips, but Dwayne Bravo is such a utility cricketer. Made it look so simple, and the good time for Colimo in Sabina Park continues. Dhoni gone for three, it's 91 for six. 98 was an average first inning score. The last eight matches have provided results. Six times the captain winning the toss has decided to bat first. And on four occasions, the team batting first has lost the test match. The West Indies will be well aware of that. Runs it away down. It'll be a boundary. Again, consistently. In the 140s, 142k is the last delivery, but Anil Kumble doesn't get back in across. He just gets back. So anything, even on the off stump, he's able to guide it to third man. Magnificent shot. Pin the ears on that. That'll go for four. It was in the slot, I must admit, but... He didn't back off, did he? Well, he won't, because he's a fighter. The opportunity to pick up some runs, and India have to do exactly that every time 
They sense there is a good chance of picking up some runs. They have to go after it and also bringing up the 100, that boundary for India. It's a very good athlete, Dwayne Bravo. Took a smart catch today off the, the edge of Mahindra Singh Dhoni's bat. Always in the action. Picked up a wicket as well of Laxman straight after lunch. thing that he will want to do Dwayne Bravo is to convert some of the starts that he's gotten in this series into good scores he's, he's looked in good form good touch with the bat and Kirsten just ensuring that the good areas on the pitch remain that way Nice shot. Nice shot from Raul Dravid. Punched with a sense of certainty. 118 for six. Three short of another half century. And it's been a good series for the Indian captain. And how often have we said that in his career? This keeps going on and on and on, having another and another good series with the bat. Just frustration for Pedro Collins, really. It went down, though. That's a good thing for Kumble. Down and into the gap. Deliberately played. Opens the face. Must happen is uh, that they've got to lift their game. Again, not where he intended for. The French cut outside the off stump, always difficult to play. More frustration for Collins. It's only been exciting when he's been in, in the attack, Jerome Taylor. He's gotten some bounce and some pace out of this pitch and generally made the batsman uncomfortable. Twenty eight runs already from this session. There were twenty nine from the first two hours of the game. Looks at the pitch. enough room for him to get it away and I don't think they'll overhaul this it's 420 Kumble at the end of the over it's 135 for six just going back to drive it's 50 there was a bit of room there got a bottom part of the bat on that ran away for for four He'll stick around and he'll come play for Rahul Dravid. Never get sick of making runs, Dravid. I expect there'll be a little bit of bounce in this in this pitch. There, there was last year when uh, Canaria pulled the West Indies out. And we've seen him do that before. Gave him the room, the right length, and there's no one out there. 
Well, he dragged the mid on up and he said, well, if you're going to do that and pitch it up, Chris Gale, I'm going to go after you. And that's what he's done. A little bit like the Steve Wall slog sweep on one knee. Good batting. He look for the opportunities to score in the safe areas, Raul Dravid. He's been there for anything that's pitched up. Looks a bit shaky at the shot for the short stuff, but he once it's pitched up, he gets into position and he's been scoring well. And he'll get four more. Thick outer half of the bat, it looked like, didn't really carry to slip. Just opened the face, kept it down, and got it through the gap. Gee, they're valuable runs, and they do. They really are. He's played this really well. It got forward, opened the blade up a little bit, ran it through the slips. It's amazing tail enders. You could have seven fieldsmen in there, and they'll still find a gap. I drive it. Gully now moves out to third man. And India, who metaphorically speaking, started very gloomily today. The weather was bright and sunny but they were extremely gloomy up until well tea time these two have done a really good job through the covers not all that well time just going for one but drop it as you would expect now the 150 has been raised the captain has remained defiant all the way through well look it's the fall at the other end and he's found a reliable partner in his oldest and most experienced player in an old Cumbly. Cumbly also did the same job in uh, similar circumstances in the previous test match in St. Kitts when he scored 43. India lost three wickets to Jerome Taylor early on the third day of the match and then recovered. Edges, one off Collins, which came off the inside edge and went past the stumps. Of the, few of which went through the slips but not catchable along the ground no chances offered there were two early today which um, didn't prove all that expensive although if Latchman had been caught when he was too early in the piece it may have made a significant difference look at his wagon wheel He's lunched around for runs in the offside, picks up the ones and two square of the wicket in the offside. And look at the number of boundaries, seven boundaries, one down the ground on the offside, and six boundaries on the leg side. He's looking to open the face of the bat when he gets a little bit of it to try and get. No. Just be another single there. Not that it's a big score by any means yet, it's 160 for six. Brian Lara used Samuels and Gale for a lot of overs in the last test match. It's in kids. Haven't seen Samuels bowl at all in this inning so far. John Paul, in fact, bowled quite a bit in his early days on the 19 level and then when he came into the first class team when he was selected for the West Indies at the age of 19 against England wasn't only his batting he was also considered a, a reasonable leg spinner gone away for four short shout was catch it but it was between the fielders and another boundary to Anil Kumble. more important runs for the the veteran number seven Lots of time for Anil Kumble to pick a spot. Was in the air. The man at point was far too fine. In spite of the fact that it's been a heavy outfield, has gone to the fence. Anil Kumble into the 40s. Aye! 73. 
And what a lovely shot. What a lovely shot by Dravid. Finding the gap. Not much of a gap between extra cover and mid-off. Flowing drive for a boundary. It wasn't a half volley. That makes it a better shot. It's not the kind of surface where the ball's coming onto the bat. Rahul Dravid. Look at the technical excellence. Head over the ball. Nice flow of the bat. And the handle so comfortably by Dravid. Goes for four. Beats uh, Collins, who was a little bit slow in getting around. And that won't get stopped anytime this week. Four more to Raul Dravid. Such an elegant driver of the ball, and he picks his spot so well. Full flow of the bat. Everything in the right position. And he gets it off the inside edge for another time in this series. Anil Kumble falls in a very similar manner. And Dwayne Bravo is falls to his knee as well. And we've seen this happen quite a few times now with Daniel Kumbli. Plays defensively with a horizontal bat, takes the bottom edge and down onto the stumps. He's had a lot of close shaves during the series and he's been actually out on a few occasions. He goes for 45. It's 184 for seven. Looking for two. And they'll get them. Good running. Well placed there by Habajan Singh. And a very well made 81. Against this man, consistent. Good position of the seam. He stayed in the channel. Just a little feather from Dravid. Straightforward catch to Ramadan. And the usual way he celebrates every time he picks up a wicket. And he's got this uncanny ability of picking up important wickets. Corey Collymore. Indian captain has played a significant role in this innings. He's gone for 81. It's 197 for 8. Just for a second there, Harbhajan. It's the 200 up there for India. One stage I was struggling to make 160. It's taken a while too. A lot of hard work. 516 balls. Harbhajan wasn't too happy there for Sri Santh calling him through. I think he wanted to face most of the bowling there from Jerome Taylor. The last 50 coming up in 90 balls there. The quickest 50 of the 200. Oh. Baldy. He started to duck. Didn't get up. It hit him in the arm or in the forearm. And it goes straight onto the stump so they get their ninth wicket here. He should never have taken a single. He's upset. Well, if you give the tail an opportunity to an opportunity to face a young kid like Taylor picking up his fourth wicket, this is what happens. Well, he did everything wrong, taking his eyes off the ball, not reading the length right, Srishan, getting a glove on the stumps. Good reward for a young fast bowler, like I mentioned, Dino. Fourth wicket for him. Srishan got for zero. It's 200 for nine. And that might be out. Takes the glove and get him in there. It's his five wicket hole. Oh, that's a big day for him. Well done. Congratulations to Jerome Taylor. His first five-wicket haul in Test cricket. And by gee, he has really broken up this game. That ball there would have got a lot of batsmen out. Not necessarily the number 11. Well, perfectly directed. And also the extra bit of bounce. He's had a lot of regular batsmen in trouble, Jerome Taylor, and somebody like Munaf Patel. It was just a matter of time. And look at that for celebration. India won the toss electing to bat. They lost Jaffa and Sawag early. Laxman chipped in with 18. Yuvraj Singh made 19. Kaif, 13. Dhoni missed out with three. Kumble, the only guy really to help. Rahul Dravid, 45. Harbhajan finished not out nine, but the man of the day for India has been the skipper. Rahul Dravid played beautifully, 81. 
and they're all out for 200. The bowling pretty good by all the bowlers. Dwayne Bravo picking up two, Corey Colimo again being economical and picking up two. Petro Collins one and the man for the moment, Jerome Taylor, simply sensational to watch and the most destructive. First five wicket haul in Test match. Welcome to the second day's play in this fourth test match between the West Indies and India live from Kingston, Jamaica. And India struggled on a pitch that did a little bit off the seam and had in a, a little bit of bounce as well. They were bowled off to 200. Raul Dravid top scored with 81 and Anil Kumble gave him good support with 45. Petra Collins uh, picked up the initial wicket, but it was uh, Jerome Taylor who picked up his first five wicket haul in Test match cricket, and he got wonderful support from Corey Colima, who bowled 19 overs for 17 runs and picked up two wickets. Couple of wickets for Dwayne Bravo as well. Ramnar Sawan received a sickening blow on the knee, but uh, we think he will bat. When he will do that is uh, left to be seen. Anil Kumble will be ready to get into the action once his captain calls upon him. It will be another intense battle between the Indian seamers, Munaf Patel and company, and the West Indian batsmen who have been in good form during this series. To tell you more about it, we go straight to the commentary box where Lakshman Shiva Ramakrishnan is with Tony Kozia. Thank you, Ian Bishop. Well, here come the batsmen. In fact, we just had a, a slight shower before the start of play. Very brief, swept across the ground. The pitch was uh, covered for maybe five or ten minutes, if that. But it's um, here is um, the pitch being covered, not as quickly as that, of course, but uh, we can speed things up for you. It's called time lapse, in case you were wondering. Just about a 15-minute period. You can see the, the shower just coming in from the from the background, from the from the east. But uh, there wasn't much rain, and it's bright and sunny now. The Blue Mountains are as clear as I've seen them at Sabina Park. We can see the peaks. It is very, very clear. Lovely seeing light. And the West Indies with an opportunity here, having dismissed India for 200 on the first day. Sri Sant back to his mark. And he will open the bowling to Chris Gale. As I say, good day to you wherever you are. And also to Lachman Shivaramakrishnan. Good morning, Tony, and good day to all of you. And India will be hoping they have a good day as well. They've got to make early inroads. Sri Shant and Manap Patel will operate with the new ball. Two men in good form, Gail and Ganga. Jerling has called play, and here is Sri Sant to Gale. Charlie Joseph uh, was saying the pitch played exactly as he predicted yesterday, that it did have bounce. He said it would have bounce. He says that it's not going to be that much different today. May just get a little bit quicker, maybe better for the batsman. He's been around long enough here at Sabina Park that he should know what he's talking about. 1998 match had to be abandoned here after they dug up the pitch charlie joseph was not all that involved in it they brought in so-called experts and they were the ones who supervised the laying of the new turf at sabina park and the pitch proved uh, so difficult that um, the match referee Barry Jarman from Australia, as he was at the time, and the two umpires agreed that the pitch was too dangerous for the match to continue. It was abandoned. Only time that has ever happened in uh, Test cricket. Well taken by Dhoni, wayward delivery. It did happen subsequently as well in a one-day international in India when the pitch was also deemed 
to be too dangerous to continue playing the match was abandoned but uh, since then they've done a very good job here at Sabina Park it's been a good pitch for cricket Stumps all over the place. What a start for India. Replicating the start the West Indies had yesterday when Sehwag was out to the third ball. Now Chris Gale has his stumps scattered all over the place with the fourth ball of the innings. And uh, his horror run here on his home ground at Sabina Park continues. Just what the doctor ordered. Good presentation of the scene. And Chris Gale was playing down the wrong line. He was playing down the wrong line. It was a good delivery from Srishant. But error in the judgment from Chris Gale has cost him his wicket. And the early strike for India comes. Gale gone for zero. West Indies none for one. Played on in the last test match in St. Kitts. After he'd made his hundred. Dropping just short, perhaps, between the two, Wasim Jaffa to his left. And the West Indies get off the mark with a streaky shot. Well, you've got to take half chances when you've just got 200 on the board. Did carry. The gap between Lakshman and Wasim Jaffa was far too much. Certainly did carry. Reacted late, Wasim Jaffa. Could this be an expensive miss? Reacting behind him, picked it up late. Can't let this happen, India. Flicked away very fine. And there will be another run. Slack cricket by India. Very slack cricket. And there should have been another one. Harbhajan trotted after it. Really slack cricket. Sri Sant's return, eluding the keeper, and no one backing up. Got a bit of a bad bounce there, Mahendra Singhoni. Poor throw in the first place, and then taking it for granted somebody would back up. Yes, had a good time in Savannah Park. Only two batsmen from the West Indies have scored more than a thousand Test runs. One of them, Sir Garfield Sobers. The other, Brian Lara. put that away commanding shot by Lara brings the crowd to life crowd such as it is an enthralling contest going on here shot of a genius stand deliver and then admire magnificent shot Nice little clip through Migwigan for at least two. Sixteen for one, but could have been a lot worse for the West Indies. Nice little work there on the leg side by Darren Ganga. Just haven't quite got the ball in the right spots. Good morning, Jeremy Coney. Good morning, Dean. Hello, everybody. Very interesting first seven overs here. The West Indies at bat now. Lara at his best now. Asked too much for that ball to swing back. And when you bowl to a player of his class, I think we'll go for four. Trisant has seen the ball pitched short and go over the top of the stumps. The last two deliveries have been quite full. He's asking the ball to swing a little more. He's got a wicket with one of those. That of Chris Gale.
anything that's up there or anything short you feel he's going to give it the kitchen sink he's going to go right after it and that will go for another four three four Solara That'll be overthrows. Now, I don't know whether or not Ganga was out of his ground, but they'll go for four. The crowd now are starting to get behind the West Indies here now. If he hit, would he have been out? You've raised the man at bat pad. Makes quite a reasonable stop. Changes hands to throw. No, Ganga was always safe. Again, a piece of loose cricket. Of days, folks, when there was no helmet, none of those pads that we've just seen Yuvraj put on. He took a blow in the head and it was caught at second slip. Magnificent shot. Full toss. Picks the gap beautifully. Brian Lara's away here now. India did yesterday in a whole session. Four more. Something special from the skipper is required here. And he's following it up with another boundary. And gone! What a delivery! Our Lara's gone! India's back in this again. A ball that seemed to explode outside off stump. Kicked and bounced, and oh, that's a real hard one to keep down. And Jaffa takes a big catch, and that's a big wicket there for Sri Sant. And Brian Lara goes. He's gone for 26, and the West Indies 42 for two. It's a strong area for Darren Ganga. Well, I feel a good commitment by Mohamed Kaif. He has done, he saved the run and could prove to be valuable. In time it's as well as he'd have liked Darren Ganga. And it would have gotten to the boundary, but with a desperation feeling from Munaf, from Mohamed Kaif. Is that dropped again? Did it carry? Jaffa, I think, missed one earlier in the day. Big healthy edge, and it did carry. Nice shot from Darren Ganga. It was delivered from wide of the crease and angled in. And Ganga waited for it and played with the angle. Brings up the West Indies 50. 53 for two. Yes. Yes. And the field will be referred to the television umpire. The field has reckoned that Samuels is dead and gone. Let's have a look. This ball spun. Beat him, drags that back foot and doesn't appear to get back, Marlon Samuels. Doesn't appear to get back. I think he's on his bike. Yeah, caught well short of the crease. It's not going to be too much deliberation over that. And there's the old red beacon. And he's got to go. They live with that drew him forward. Reach for it. And just drag that back foot. Neat piece of work from Donny. Samuels has to depart for two, and it's 53 for three. Gotcha! Yeah! 
steal it again by Streisand. In fact, it was a solution. He takes full advantage now of the full toss. Gets a boundary for it. Spotted it early. Easy shot for a boundary. It was a full toss, but I've been impressed at the way Ganga, after his 160-odd in the second innings at St. Kitts, he's just freed himself, and he feels now, I think, the level of confidence required to play well at this level. Nice shot. He really has freed himself up, Ganga. He's playing with a, a lot of confidence. Just gets two for it, but a nice-looking shot. drive Chandapal goes goes for a wide one with an aggressive shot Patel gets the wicket West Indies just before lunch are 72 for four big wicket just a little wider no foot movement from Chandapal he sliced one through the gully just prior to lunch Chandapal goes for 10 72 for four the West Indies Flicked away, fine shot by Ganga. He played it earlier, only got two for it. This time it reaches the boundary. This just shows what could be available for the West Indies if they could get through that new ball. Very nice stroke. Just pivoting slightly on the heel so it opens up the foot to play through that area. Good timing. Big turner out, leg before. Karbachan strikes with his second delivery to Darren Ganga, who goes back to an off break. The finger is raised. The West Indies have lost their fifth wicket before lunch. And the fine innings by Darren Ganga. Big turn here. Look how far it pitches outside the off stump. Coming back. The question is, has it hit him close enough to the stumps? So Ganga, who has looked so dangerous, has been dismissed on the stroke of lunch. And someone may not be that comfortable, Dino, but I think Harbhajan is. He's getting prodigious turn on this pitch. And he's gone. Got a nick onto the body. Taken by Yuvraj Singh. Bravo is gone without scoring. Paul pitched and turned. Just a little inside edge. And neatly taken by Yuvraj Singh. At forward short leg. Stayed down. Took a good catch. Dwayne Bravo, he goes for naught. It's 81 for six. Can Sawan be the man to score or get them up close to 200? Don't forget, India were 91 for six as well. And that's beautifully struck, and that'll be four. It's a tough edge. It's up in the air. Kaif is under it. And the West Indies lose their seventh wicket. Well, he tried to take him on, tried to slog him over mid-wicket. It's the bounce. Was it the, the right delivery? Obviously, it wasn't. Let's have a look at it here. Made his mind up. He's top edge out. He's trying to hit that behind square. And Cave looks like he tried to take that above near his ears now. Watched it straight into his hand. So, Harbhajan... He's chipped in here. He's got three wickets for two. Sarwan, the injured Sarwan goes for seven. It's wide and he's cut it again. And that'll be four more. Oh, yeah. That spun has taken an edge, hit the pad, and he's gone. And Harbhajan gets his fourth wicket in just his fourth over.
misjudged the length of that. Bounce hit the glove off the pad, and Yuvraj did the rest. Once the single, there could be an easy run out. What is happening here? You never know. One can never explain. Taylor played an attacking shot, didn't make good connection. Wanted the single. Collins would move. Another wicket for India. Ninth one down for the West Indies. Enjoy West Indies' success and do not take the defeat. This is poor cricket indeed. Very poor cricket. It was a striker's call. Taylor called for it. He would have reached very safely to the other end. Taken the aerial route. There's a man underneath it. Taken. Graham the save off. Takes the catch in the deep. And Harbhajan Singh for the 19th time in Test Match Korea has picked up five wickets in an innings. And for the second consecutive time. And what a effort it's been by the Indians. Well, compliments to India. The spinners have done the work, the seamers have done the work. They only scored 200. They came out and they fought. And it's brought them a reward. But it has to be said, the West Indies haven't shown the appetite, I think, for the battle. They've surrendered meekly on too many occasions, just like this last wicket. Well bowled Habajan Singh. Well bowled Kumble, Patel, and Trisant. West Indies have to look themselves in the mirror and ask, did we give our best? Harbhajan Singh being the star for India. 5 for 13 in just 4.3 overs for Harbhajan Singh. That's how it all started. Chris Gale departed early. Playing down the ring. Wrong line. Dismissed for zero. Darren Ganga, the top scorer. Lara tried to play some shots, but thereafter, no resistance at early. Playing down the ring. Wrong line. Dismissed for zero. Darren Ganga, the top scorer. Lara tried to play some shots, but thereafter, no resistance at all from any of the batsmen. And eventually dismissed for 103. In the air, and what a flounder! It's stuck! That's the start the West Indians wanted. He stuck the right mid out, and bang! Morton, what a catch! Well, they're not so restless now in the bleachers because Renako Morton has hung on to a screamer going hard from the bat of Jaffa. One handed, he is a right handed player. Just a nice little piece of cricket that may change things around. Runs. That's where he likes them. I'll give him an inch of room outside off stump, he'll punish you. Yes, just how will Sewag play against Jerome Taylor in particular? If you give him widths, there wasn't a lot of widths. He likes the ball outside the eyes and on the offside. Because of the field setting at the moment, 6-3, most of them on the offside, then the bowler is going to tend to be looking to go there. If he goes hard at it, at least he'll know it's going to provide a hard catch. Four slips in the gully. Oh, it's a big chance, and he's gone! Savannah Park. Eight wickets, or oh, sorry, seven wickets in the match for him now. The dangerous Sawag is gone. Well, how low was it for a start? Did it hit him in line? Yep. I think that hasn't done enough to miss the leg stump. It's hitting knee roll. Looks pretty good to me in terms of height as well. Taylor, a wicket in his first over, and a wicket in his second over. Sawag has gone for four. LBW, Taylor, it's six for two. Nice shot. He, he is a class act. Once you make one little mistake, he'll be all over you. Beautiful shot. The 
attempt at Yorker and just to get in between bat and pad. Drive it down on it quickly. He's always in control of his bat. The, the bat certainly comes from about sort of fourth slip. If you look at his back lift, it always comes in from about fourth slip, which is wider than most, but he gets it down quickly. Sometimes that that little curve gives bowlers an opportunity. It's the only thing, and it's actually looking at that last shot that we showed you, not as bad as it used to be. Perhaps he's paying some attention to it. That's straight there, then it goes out, comes down on the angle. Now a quick bowler, sometimes able to exploit that. Holly Moore. More runs uh, for Lakshman, two of them. So the Indians have worked their way to 20. Change in commentary, Tony Kozia and Lakshman Shivarama Krishna. Banged away. That was short and wide. And four. And he's put that through extra cover this time. Expensive over here from Collins on his return. Two boundaries to two short balls. shot beautifully placed and timed and it makes the boundary gets into the boundary so a four to break a sequence of maidens with a beautifully played and timed shot that is just a masterful shot 46 for two Surface. Not the same quality as how Jan Singh and Ali Kumble, we know that. There is a little bit of turn, a little bit of bounce. Even with the ball that was 17 overs old, Kumble was getting it to rip and, and bounce. Yeah, got him. Talk about bounce. That's a brilliant catch from Lara. It was going down. And he really stayed low and snaffled it. Oh, the skipper leading the way, as with Collymore, the senior players doing the job there. Again, Blackman's worked very hard for his 16, but let's have a look, see if this ball's done something. Bounced a little bit, yes, it nearly took the thumb, and low to the, the bootlaces, good catch. Strong catch, they needed that wicket. And the dangerous VVS Laxman, he goes for 16 of 59 deliveries, he's worked hard. And India, 49 for three, still leading by 146 runs. That's magnificent. It's back of a length. And he has punched that for four in the easiest of manners. It's an outstanding shot. Slips. India lose another wicket. And not for the first time, Yuvraj Singh having a waft outside that off stump. Didn't get across, but paid well away from his body, and Brian Lara is making no mistakes in the slips today. You drop it short, you get cut. Sixty-nine for four. Lovely shot. 
beautifully timed and placed. We saw a couple of those uh, in the first innings from uh, Mohamed Kaif. Just easily pushed for a boundary. Well, it's an important innings he's playing, Mohamed Kaif. Got 100 early in the series, but he hasn't followed it up with a good score. Here's an opportunity under pressure to get some good quality bowling. If it was uh, Collins coming near the end, he certainly has put an exclamation mark on it. 76 for five. Well, looking to drive square with the wicket on the offside. And again, getting a thick part of the inside edge. Carrying on to the leg stump. First shot from Mohamed Kev, not what India wanted, exactly what the West Indies wanted. And Pedro Collins has effected the breakthrough. It's been hard work for him. Another disappointment from Mohamed Kaif. He's gone to six. India, 76 for five. Squeeze through. Long chase down for Lara. I think the ball will beat him. And does. Lovely shot. Raul Dravid. Straight drive. Out of nowhere, block, 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 good delivery, good delivery. Hey, it's come along, half ah, folly, thank you, four. It's the focus and it's also the concentration. Another bad one, hammered away by Dravid. Two boundaries in the over, how quickly was he onto that? Well, perhaps understandably here, Collins showing signs of tiredness. Well, look at the transfer body weight rocks back onto the back foot and hits it in front of the square the batsman hits it in front of the square the message is very clear to the bowler i'm picking you and getting into good positions early might and that's a good shot straight down the ground raul dravid brings up his 50. His second half century of the match. The only batsman in the match to get a half century up to now. He's got two. Not everyone can replicate the technique that he has, but what I'd like to see replicated on both sides is his attitude. Certainly. Application and concentration. That's got whacked as well. You don't run in and bowl looseness to this man. Short and he pounced on it like a cat. And he's bowled him. Just put up on the second highest partnership of the game so far. Things were looking good. He just made a cracking cut. And then falls to one that ducks back on him and shatters the lumber. Mahindra Singh Dhoni. He's gone for 19. India are 122 for 6. Well, he gets a single. He's just too good, isn't he? The skipper. That's the end of the over. 128 for six. And they were fantastic. But this West Indian team has fought back pretty well, I feel. They're still in this match. A need to knock over Rahul Dravid, who again is uh, one of the great batsmen in the world. Almost of all time for India, that's for sure. And he's 62 not out. He's been just a, a great example of great concentration and application shown on this pitch 62 to him Jaffer and Sawag missed out Laxman got 16 and worked hard for his 16 you've read Singh played a loose shot outside off stump for 13 Muhammad Cape inside edge for six and Dhoni 
got a low one there from Jerome Taylor out for 19. So there it is there after 49 overs, 128 for six. Long spells for Collins and Colomar. Collins picking up one and Colomar. Again, economical and effective. But the pick of the bowlers in the young, fast Jerome Taylor. He's already picked up eight wickets so far in this match. Here's the match summary there. India won the toss elected to bat, made 200, and that was yesterday. Dravid 81, Kumble 45. West Indies in response, 103. A disappointing effort from them today. Harvajan, 5 for 13, and Sri Santh really got through and bowled well, 2 for 34. The only batsman to make some runs at all for the West Indies who looked half decent was Ganga with 40. And India in response, 128 for 6, with Rahul Dravid again making runs, 62 not out. Taylor 3 for 28. So India are 225 runs ahead with six with four wickets in hand. Welcome to day three of this fourth test between the West Indies and India live from Kingston. Thank you, Ian Bishop. Good morning to you, wherever you may be. Game still perched uh, in suspension because although India do lead by 225, it's a total that remains within strike of one or two bold innings from the West Indian batsman. Rahul Dravid on 62, Kumble on two. So the lower order of the Indians has been exposed. West Indies need to strike and strike quickly. Counting up all the team members. Yep, he seems to have got to 11. Corey Collymore will open from the George Headley end. Bowling towards the Blue Mountains end, which has provided some source of inspiration for the quicker bowlers. Field, two slips. Here's Collymore. First ball of the third day. And not a bad one. From outside the off stump, angle face of the bat from Anil Kumble. Ramnari Sarman was the field at mid on. Was it uh, up to full fitness? Just gingerly going after the ball. Oh, that's got through everybody. Buys. That's why you've got to get forward if you can. Again, from that length, you'd expect the ball to come up a lot higher. Anil Kumble, in fact, was trying to get his feet off the ground, expecting the ball to bounce extra. Always going to be a very difficult take for the wicketkeeper, Ramdin. Runs all the same. India now lead by 231. Tucked it away, runs here. In fact, it beats Collymore. One thirty eight for six. Leg stump line too full. Picked off by Kumla. Three runs from the over. The Indians have resisted the attack from the West Indies for seven overs. So after the first half, hour, India still fighting very hard in the second innings. They're 141 for six. Drava has just added one more to his overnight score. Anil Kumble is moved into the double figures. It's been very gritty. Change in bowling from the far end, the Blue Mountain end. It's going to be Collins replacing Taylor and change in the commentator's box as well. It's going to be Tony Cozia. With him is Jeffrey Duchamp. Thank you, Shiva. Good morning uh, to viewers wherever you are. But uh, a number of West Indian, former West Indies players are in the Jamaica Cricket Association area. 
the box. Tom Judney in the in the hat there, fast bowler. Reginald Scarlett, the off spinner. And for the first time, I think, in the test match, we've seen uh, the former West Indies captain, wicketkeeper batsman, Jerry Alexander. Led the West Indies uh, in the 19, late 1950s. Early 1960s. There he is, uh, looking back, having a word with some of his old colleagues. He's also one of the five wicket keepers produced by my school, Wilmers. 141 for six. We'll come back to that bragging from Dujon after a while. So Ivan Barr in the 1930s, and then on to Jerry Alexander, who we've just seen, and Jackie Hendricks, who is uh, now the president of the Jamaica Cricket Association, is in that box as well. And then some fella called uh, Peter Jeffrey Leroy Dujon. And the more recent has been Carlton Bohr. So there are the five, quite... Uh, Quite a record for one school to produce five test wicket keepers. Wilmers College here in Kingston. Caught, wicket taken, Dwayne Bravo, and a wicket to Corey Collamore. Dwayne Bravo plucks it out of the air, a third slip. West Indies have taken their first wicket. The difficult come blade dislodged for 10. Just look where his hands go, way out ahead of his body. Reaches for that delivery and just gets the outside edge. Good catch from Dwayne Bravo. <laughs> Cracked away. Fine shot. Short and wide and that's a boundary for Dravid. Goes away for four. 145 for seven at the end of the over. Plays in the safe areas, Raul Dravid. Hit that in front of point. Hit it where he could see it, where he could control it. Marlon Samuels from the gully. Not all the way back. About three-quarter way. Nice drive. Real half volley from Cullimore. Rear. And well put away by Harbhajan Singh. Well, he got the previous delivery to lift. And Harbhajan trying to push Harbhajan back. Pitched this one up, but he was right in position. Just waited on it and stroked it nicely through extra cover. Good example of playing what you see. Just overhead, gone for four. Another one of those lifters took him on the glove, I think. He's asking for a replacement glove or some attention. 153 for seven. This one really took off. Seemed a bit. Far less playable than the previous delivery that he got. And it was the, the pace with which it came up that took it over the slips. Gone through him, keeping low. And the wall has been breached by Colomore. His fourth of the innings. Drab it goes in a similar fashion to. Doni yesterday, ball keeping low, 154 for eight. The wall has been breached. And he'd been picking the length so well, Raul Dravid, in coming out on that front foot, decided to stay back this time, and this delivery kept low and hustled onto him.
a fine innings, an excellent innings of 68 comes to an end. Rahul Dravid goes. It's 154 for eight. Wallop. An absolute wallop. It's gone for six. That is a remarkable shot by Harbhajan Singh. That is a long... by Sri Sand, sorry. That is a very long boundary. Well, he missed the first one, but this is a home run. This one did clear the fences. You can't get more agricultural than that. Came off the meat of the bat. Banged away into the offside without much timing. Thinks of a single. Can't get it. Everyone's interest will be glued onto this match. Kids will be running about the outfield during the luncheon interval. Executing their skills at kiddie cricket. will hold so much interest quick single there it's amazing we see it a lot in test cricket and also in one day cricket the batsman just brushing the bowler a little bit the bowler doesn't have to get out of the way of the batsman's line it just makes sure that it doesn't walk into the line of the of the batsman running between the wickets change of length I think Taylor saw him coming and directed it short of a length into the body and Lara takes another one well there was a charge followed him deflected it straight to Brian Lara says if it was nicking practice another catch to Lara he hasn't missed many has he and the danger three south goes they're nine down, three chance go for 16, and it's 171 for nine. Is that it? It must be it. Lara's taken a catch. Five catches to Lara, five wickets to Collymore. Fourth time, and they celebrate with him. He loves Sabina Park. Outside edge and a great catch moving forward. Brian Lara, you are in good form in the slips. I know he's dropped one, but that was a difficult one. It started to dip, move, move forward, and just got it an inch off the ground. Very good catch. This will be a great angle. He starts to move as well. That's made it just a bit difficult for him as well. But more importantly, Corey Collymore. What an effort for him and also for Jerome Taylor. Let's not forget about his effort with his four wickets, but well done. To Corey Collymore. They're in this game now, the West Indies. Couldn't have come back in a better way. They've bowled out the West Indy, the Indian team here for 171, thanks to the efforts of Rahul Dravid. But starts to Dhoni and Kumble, 10, 9 to Habajan and 16 to Sri South. But all out for 171. Collins got one wicket, but Jerome Taylor, nine wickets in this match, a very good effort for him, four for 45. Corey Collimore, the fourth time he's got a five-wicket haul, third time on this ground, five for 48. And Dwayne Bravo, no wicket for 10. So, there it is there. All out for 171. India, 200. West Indies, 103. The lowest score ever by the West Indies against India and India 171. So the West Indies need 269 runs to win this game here in Jamaica. Will be Ganga and Gale 
Gangren, good touch. Sri Sant will be the bowler. Having just to come off a entertaining little innings would have entertained him as much as anyone else. The big six of uh, Taylor. We eventually got him. And he'll bowl to Gale when we dismissed fourth ball in the first innings. Here's the first ball. Tantalizing leave here from Gale, and the pad is out over the off stump this time. We'll look at the front foot. No look at the off stump there. Bat held high. Quite brave because this is the first innings. Didn't get the pad in the way, in fact, let it go. That's the result. Out, second slip, second ball, a pair for Chris Gale. VBS Latchman hangs on to the catch. Chris Gale on his home ground here at Sabina Park has gone for a pair and India have struck immediately. Delivery that just held its line and Chris Gale, as he's wont to do, little footwork to get in behind the ball, looking to hit it square. He exposes the edge. Lakshman takes the catch. The worst possible start for the West Indies chasing these runs. Gale gone for naught. It's no runs for one wicket. Dravid has been the only batsman who has managed to, to cope with the change. It's been the change, the transformation of batsmen who had been confronted with uh, placid pitches prior to this, now coming to this one and having to, to change. That's a nice shot. Beautifully timed and placed. And that's a boundary for Ganga. It's gorgeous. Sent it skipping across the grass in Jamaican sun. Lara gets a boundary. Square. West Indies move on to 11 for 1 at the end of the over. And that's in this man, Sri Sant and Patel. That's gone down towards third man. That's another boundary for Ganga. Now Sri Sant getting the ball with conventional swing. So he has to pitch full, and while he does, opportunity for Ganga, who goes back and then forward to play a drive. Lara struggles on him a, a little bit. Not very intended, but runs all the same. Looking to hit through the offside. Maybe the ball just coming in a fraction. He just closed the bat a little bit. Didn't quite get it forward as well as he would have liked. He got done in length, didn't he? Patel has this ability to nip the ball away from the left-hander. And he's knocked him over. He's knocked him over. What a great delivery. Right into the block hole. A wonderful sight for any fast bowler. And Srishant, after lunch, has provided India with yet another breakthrough. What a delivery. He's picked that up at 237 kilometers per hour. Outswing a Yorker. Oh, that's a great delivery. Off stump is knocked back. It's an awful sound if you're a batsman, but a great sound if you're an Indian. 
and thanks to the man above, but well bolted there to Street Champ. Darren Ganga goes for 16, and the West Indies 27 for 2. You just feel now, if the West Indies are going to win this match, it's all down to Lara, Sarwan and Chandapal. They're the three guys for me. A couple of cameos maybe from Bravo and Samuels, of course, but it's these two batsmen and the next batsman here. If they get some runs, they're in, still in this with a chance. And Brian Jelling is pretty conscious about where Munaf Patel is running. I think he's going to want him now. That's the first one. Cautioned him a couple of times already. It's the official first warning for running on the pitch for Munaf Patel. Let's have a look if he gets in there. Yep. That's fair enough. They've been quite harsh on it, but more importantly, consistent on it as well, the two umpires. That could be close, and he goes! Up goes the finger! Brian Lara has to depart. And what an effort by India. Warned the previous delivery. He did not play in the mind of Manav Patel. And a good delivery to come back. And the big one of Brian Lara. Now let's see if it pitches online. It does. It comes back. Oh, and that's plum. Absolutely plum LBW. Got him jumping in the air. And that's a huge wicket there for India. That ball would have gone on to hit the stumps. And Brian Jerling gives Brian Lara out. The dangerous Brian Lara goes for 11. And the West Indies in all sorts of trouble. 29 for 3. Shibner in Chandapal, the new man in. Won't have expected to come to the crease so early after lunch. India picked up two wickets. And Brian Lara was a big wicket. I think he's taking a look at his dismissal. Comes a long way across. Front, plumb in front. The Heisman height wasn't a problem. The line wasn't a problem. And a good decision from Brian Jerling. Just done him in length. He's looking down, looking down. He's waiting for the players to applaud and clap. And he knows now. Oh, he knows. Didn't bother looking at the umpire, Brian Lara. Yeah, the major concern there was for umpire Jerling is whether or not a pitch outside leg stump. So Brian Lara just watching the replay and he said, yep, that's good enough for me. Good shot. Good positive shot. Has it got enough to get to the fence? Yes, it does. A very good boundary for Sarman. The first one for him. Nice way to really get your innings flowing. The key. Good hands. Got his weight forward to a ball that's swinging away. Nice timing. Didn't over hit the ball there. Try to get it right in the middle of the bat. Open the blade up just a smidgen. And he's tucked that away nicely. Will it go all the way? Yes, it will. It's four runs to Shivna Ryan Chandra Fall. 48 for three. Harbhajan. Two's the call straight away. Harbhajan took five wickets in the first innings and it's this pitch map there all around that line and length. Now, we'll see if he can get into those zones again today. Mainly caused by the West Indian batsman playing a lot on the back foot. Oh! Oh! Now is that out? Nearly, nearly run out. He's given him caught. He's given him caught at first slip. I thought he got an inside edge. Rudy Kurtzen has given that out, but there's two ways he could have been given out. Either it's LBW or caught. It has carried to Rahul Dravid a first slip. Then he tried to throw him out, run out. He missed the stumps. 
We'll have to have a look here, but he's given out. Well, certainly, there's no doubt about that. I thought it was LBW, actually, Dean. That was my initial impression. Let's see where it pitches. Outside off there. And I don't know whether he's got an inside edge to that. LBW has just been confirmed. So not a big turner of the ball. There was just a little bit of turn that you could discern from that replay. Didn't hit the ball. Chanderpaul departs Sabina Park for 13. Partnership has now been broken. It's 56 for four. Punched away, goes for four. Indians trying to encourage him, you can hear. Indians uh, saying, oh, ho, ho, and Harbage I'm clapping it. But it's there, and he hit it away and got four for it. Well, that's the way he plays. Anything on the leg stump or leg side will disappear. He favors the mid-wicket area. Doesn't get hold of it cleanly, but still will travel to the fence quickly. Combray is following through. Straight drive for four. Low full toss, put away by Sawan. Relieves a little bit of the tension, at least gives the West Indian spectators the opportunity of cheering. They haven't had much opportunity recently. Very rare loose delivery from Anil Kumble. Had to be put away. And very nicely done by Saravan again. His second boundary is on 21. Nice to play. Clever shot by Sawan. Using the pace of the ball, getting a sing getting a double for it. Well, it's a question of just picking the off break because it is going to turn and you're hitting it with the turn and no protection in the deep. It is a safe shot and he plays it well to Wayne Bravo. Be quite happy with a few more of these. They brought the long leg now to a deep backward square leg. He's gone a lot squarer following those two shots. Magnificent straight drive by Sawan. Use of feet, straight back, pass the bowler, four. He made a belated attempt, Daniel Kumbli, but that was smashed. Hit very powerfully. He'll use his feet, Dwayne Bravo. Very natural mover. Got to it and gave that the business. Very strong on the onside. He covered it nicely, picked his spot and whipped it away. Over the top again. And four more. Wayne Bravo. And this is how he plays. Didn't have to use his feet this time. Was pitched a little further up. Just picked it up over mid on. How does India respond here? Just a little bit of a flurry. More three fours in three balls. The crowd has gone wild here in the George Headley stand. And this was a genuine shot out of the middle of the bat. Runs a hemorrhaging. Well, 
Well, he's very strong in this area. Ramner Sawan got on top of that nicely. A flurry of boundaries from the West Indies. But they can't afford to get carried away. This is a commanding performance to bring up a half century for Ramner Sawan. The first batsman in the match outside Raul Dravid to score half century. And it is welcome. He's put himself his head down and batted for this. 95 deliveries for Ramner Sawan. And this is a copybook cover drive. Nervous now. Done some hard work. And we're seeing hard work being done by the West Indies vice captain at the crease. And a young man in Dwayne Bravo. Long way to go still. One wicket here. And it's difficult to get in on this surface. Sand turns around and appeals to the umpire as a formality. Sawan has gone. What a passage of play this has been. And just like, just when they looked like they were getting on top, the West Indies, Sawan goes. It's pitched up delivery. Sawan. Just getting his hands out there, just pushing at it. And a good catch taken at slip by Raul Dravid. West Indies back in trouble. Sawan goes for 51. It's 126 for five. Yeah, can I get an 80 out of Bravo? Ken Samuel shipping with the 20 or 30. Ramden another 20 or 30. And, and hopefully for the West Indies, I won't need any more after that. It's got to be a team performance. And as you can see, apart from Gale, everyone's got double figures. Oh, yeah. Bowman. Bravo's gone. Kumble claims the scalp. Well, what's happened there? Just when you thought things were on top and inside five minutes, this game's done a U-turn. It's the one that sort of goes straight on at the front of the hand. A big wild mo at that. Took his eyes off the ball and the experienced one. Anil Kumble picks up his second wicket. And the West Indies now are back into disarray. Bravo goes for 33 and the West Indies are 128 for six. So that Samuels reckons he can get it over. Mid-off now, mid-on now drops back a bit. Out, gone, caught short leg. Could it be leg before? Samuels walks off, whatever there is, it is. Jerling has raised the finger. Ball taken full at short leg. Doesn't necessarily mean that it is a catch. Hit the pad, we'll soon tell. Well, he gave it quickly, Brian Jerling. Didn't think about it. Just get the feeling it pitched around the leg stump. Did he get an inside edge? No. Hit the pad. He has given him out leg before. And that's a very debatable decision. It pitches on leg, hits him on leg, and we can see the impact just outside the leg stump. The angle might have just taken it down the leg side. A very debatable decision, but given in a hurry by Brian Jarlik, much to the delight of Anil Kumble. And India will settle for it. So there is uh, another wicket for India and for Cumbly. Brings Jerome Taylor in now. And you just feel that the end is not too far away. 144 for seven. 
Samuels just out given leg before wicket. And here is what Hawkeye makes of it. And Hawkeye makes of it that it will hit the leg stump. So he's been given leg before. Oi! And there's a cut shot for four. So Taylor has come in and uh, off his first delivery has hit a boundary. Have a little shot will go for four. Gets rammed in a boundary. Now, down towards the boundary and four. Neatly played by Ramden. Ends the over. 158 for seven. Well, that really was a flamboyant shot by Taylor. No oh, way. Beautifully played, reaching right out and played a classic cover drive, rammed in. Nice shot, there'll be three at least, might even go for four. The wind is howling down into that area, and it is. He picked the doors out, played it well. Just like that. Gee, he sees that. He saw it short quickly on the back foot and smashed it through extra cover. There's a few little concerns here in the Indian camp, folks. Oh, the big appeal there, and he's gone. It was the quicker one. I just thought on impact that I could see middle and off stump. It's the eighth wicket gone, and Taylor. He's gone for 20. And it's a master at work. Gave him a slower one to cut, and this one just hustled on to him. Quicker delivery. Some doubt there as to whether it would have hit the stumps. Appeared to be going down. But the umpire didn't think so. So Jerome Taylor goes for 20. The West Indies eighth wicket has fallen. It's 180. Kenny's former partnership here with Ramden. Here's a ball that just hitting. Did the question is, would it have hit leg stump, Mr. Hawkeye? What do you think? Right smack bang on leg stump. Oh, it's another one. Big appeal. And this one going the batsman's way. End of an extraordinary over. 180 for eight. Good shot there. They might go for four. Well played. Brandon will take it up to them. There's no use. In the first part of the over. And that's a fantastic pull shot. He'd be proud to, to have hit that one like that douche. All coming in. Outside edge. That might go for four, and it will. India won't mind that, but then again, the West Indies won't mind a boundary either. Sawan and Bravo. And it continues from Dennis Ramden. It takes him to 46. Four runs. 50 to Dennis Ramden, his third test match half century. In the scheme of things, he's worked hard for it. Promising young player. Terrific half century. Displayed great character on a difficult pitch. Some wonderful shots. Eight boundaries in that 52 to Dinesh Ramden. He might just look for the boundary now, Ramdin. It's high. How far is it gone? It's gone all the way for six. What a piece of timing. Gravy is jumping. 
Ramnin is smiling. Loud appeal and gone. Kumble takes the ninth wicket of the innings. Anil Kumble has taken his 33rd five-wicket haul in Test match cricket, removing Pedro Collins. Height facts, huh? Well, I have my own thoughts. There is a margin for error on it. And that, that, is, that is dead to me. I'd give that 10 out of times. He's got a stride in, but I have to give that. Ah! Is that out? Ah! Everyone thinks it's out. The feelers think it's out. And the batsman is walking. And it's a test match victory to Raul Dravid and a series victory to India and it's a margin of 50 runs in fact 49 runs and look at the huddle look at how much it means after 35 years India have registered a serious victory in the West Indies it's taken them a long long time have never won a test match in Jamaica first time they're winning a test match in Jamaica Kingston and they won a series. They started off the tour with a victory in the one day internationals here and had a series of defeats and drawn test matches. And finally, for Rahul Dravid and his men, they taste sweet victory here. And showing some fight and ending their innings on 219 of 69.4 overs. Dennis Ramden, not out 62, got good support from Jerome Taylor. And uh, Ramner Sawan getting a half century as well, 51. It's been a good bowling performance. Srishan providing the early breakthrough once again. Munaf Patel, good supporting act played by him. Maintained the pressure by not conceding too many runs. Good economy rate. But really the standout performer was the oldest member of the Indian team, Anil Kumble. 33rd time he's gone past. Five wickets in inning, six for 78. Yet another match winning performance from Anil Kumble. So India have won this fourth test match by 49 runs and take the series by 1-0.